Hi everyone, welcome to Python Osmosis, Episode 1, the screencast where you can learn Python fundamentals without falling asleep. I'm Ryan Shea, and today we'll be learning about using the Python interpreter. Let's get started. The first step is to open up a shell. On most Unix systems, Python is installed in the system path, but to determine where Python is located on your system, type which Python. In my case, it's located in slash user slash bin slash Python. One common way of initializing Python is to type python minus c and pass python a command. You can use any python command in between these quotes and it'll execute the python command. This is great for one-liners. Another switch you can throw to python is minus m. What minus m does is includes a module on the command line. In this case, I've included the PDB Python debugger, and I've sent the, the, the program foo.py to it. This dumps me into the interactive debugger where I can move line by line. Another great thing you can do with the Python shell is you can type python minus i foo.py. This will run your foo.py program and then at the end dump you into the interactive interpreter. This will let you inspect some of the variables as the program completes. But probably the most common way of using Python is just by simply typing Python. Python includes an interactive interpreter, which is really great for using, yeah, you guessed it, interactively. The three greater than signs are the primary prompt. You can set variables, you can create loops, You notice the three dots. The three dots indicate a continuation character, or the secondary prompt. This means that it's within one particular command. The if loop is interpreted as one command, and the three dots would be a single line. To exit the interpreter, use Control D, the end of file character. Let's get back into the Python shell. This is how you'd create a string. The variable foo is assigned to string. One of the great things about Python is stack traces. So I just tried to print the variable bar, and Python threw back a stack trace, which tells me trace back name error. Name bar is not defined. That gives me good information about what mistake I've made in my Python programming. Another common one you'll see is a keyboard interrupt. So I could create an infinite loop. Now my loop is continuing, and I control C to issue the keyboard interrupt. Once again, control D to, enter, to exit the Python shell. Next to using Python interactively, one of the more common ways is to use Python within a program. Let's create one. We've just created var.py. I'm using vi as my editor, but you can use whatever text editor you'd like. The shebang, the line at the top of the script that you use for Python, is user bin env python. This may vary from system to system, but this will be the most common. This is a simple hello world program. 
I'm simply printing the string hello world. You can run this script by typing python bar.py and you see hello world is run. A more common way may be to make the script executable. When it's executable, it uses the shebang at the top of the script to determine which program to run. Now if I run the program directly, I see hello world. That's all for today. This screencast is directly inspired by the official Python tutorial by Guido Van Rossum at python.org.